KFSR and CMAC present the Central Valley Ledger, a public affairs program featuring stories from all over the Central Valley with Sivag Tediosian, 90.7 KFSR. Welcome to another edition of the Central Valley Ledger. We're recording out of the beautiful downtown Fresno studios of the Community Media Access Collaborative, Fresno and Clovis, not too far from the newly opened Fulton Street. Actually, it's been open for a while now. If you haven't come out, go out and check out the restaurants. Fulton Street and the downtown area is changing. Our guest this week is a journalist. He actually finds interesting news and he puts it on a website, a website that I check daily, by the way. His name is Alex Tavalian. Alex, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me, Savon. So your entity or organization is San Joaquin Valley Sun. That's correct? correct. That's correct. And you're the executive editor, right? Right. Yeah, that's that's my title, and uh, it's a fun title to have. How did you come up with the name the San Joaquin Valley Sun? You know, it started really with, uh, to me, I, I figured the one thing that most people want in their news, they wanted something to shine a light on and provide a spotlight on what's happening. And so I figured there's no better light source out there than the sun itself. So before that, mm -hmm. you had, you've done a lot. So I've done a lot of things, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, 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 what fascinates me about you is you're always doing something. Like, I don't, I don't imagine you have an idle time in your day. I, I really wish I did. <laughs> I wish I had a couple of weeks for vacation. That'd be nice. <laughs> so you went to law school. Mm -hmm. You graduated law school. You passed the bar. Yeah. But you were still doing stuff on the side. So tell us a little bit more before we dig into yeah. this news website that you yeah. have. Tell us about your background. Yeah, so um, I'm a born and raised Valley native. I uh, grew up here in Fresno and graduated from Clovis West and went to Fresno City College before attending UC Davis. Um, and then I went to law school, as you mentioned, down in San Diego at California Western School of Law. Um, in between, I've had a lot of different odd jobs. I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, I'm a former, I'm an alumnus of the Fresno Bee. I used to be a reporter there, um, as well as the Sacramento Business Journal. Um, and then I've worked in politics as well. I've worked on a number of campaigns um, and kind of getting a feel of the political, you know, sort of circuit here in the Central Valley, specifically in Fresno. Um, and so it's kind of provided a really interesting prism to our community um, and our region more precisely at this point um, as, as we, you know, as I continue to try in different things. One of the things that I had done previous to starting the San Joaquin Valley, so I had a, another publication that I had started called the Central Valley Observer or CV Observer. Uh, which we've actually merged together with with the Sun, and so it's one unified publication with reporters here in Fresno and and contributors all around the valley, from Bakersfield to Modesto. I, it seems to me that all the stuff you've done in your past has led you to this kind of website where you shine a light on what's going on locally. Yeah, is that a correct statement? Uh, you know, I think so. I think it's it's. Um, the, the one benefit to the sun is it's a, there's a lot of research. I think one of the things I really pride myself on is being able to dig and find things that not only are interesting but are important. And so um, I think all the different facets and skills that I've acquired over a number of years have kind of contributed to how we have sort of executed news at the sun. And it's very different from what other news organizations locally and even you know, statewide do. You could have been ever anywhere after especially graduating and passing the bar, yeah. you could have been anywhere in the nation, in the world. You decided to come back to Fresno, yeah. why? You know, this is home. More important, more than anything else, this is home. But I, I think the biggest thing and the reason why I came back to Fresno has a lot more to do with its potential. You know, I lived, I lived in an area that I, I saw really change, which was Sacramento. I lived in the Sacramento area going to UC Davis, and that's a, a, a metropolitan area that's really rapidly changed, and I think a lot of it is driven by the Bay Area, but Fresno really hasn't had that that turning point moment. Um, and I and also live in San Diego, which is a, just a bur I mean, an absolutely explosive. Yeah, Sac Sacramento, San Diego. I've been <laughs> everywhere, man. I, I really have. And 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 so I I look at Fresno as this city that has a lot of untapped potential, and mm -hmm. it's it's probably the last part of California aside from the desert and you know the the absolute furthest north points <laughs> that really can be molded. It can be shaped into something that is different than LA, it's different than San Francisco and the Bay Area, it's different than Orange County or San Diego. It, it's its own entity and it has its own culture. And I think um, tapping, you know, being able to be a part of that untapped potential is so important. And that's part of the reason why I came home. You 
shine the light on stuff that may not, for the person who's doing whatever they're doing, may not be very popular. Yeah. You might get people who don't like you. You might get people <laughs> who call you names. Oh, yes. Does that deter you? No, uh, it doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't, and I and I, I think a lot of it is, um, you know, there's a realization that uh, for some people, you know, there's there. I've had people call me names and say a lot of things, and and a lot of it comes from you know they've just never experienced. You know, they're, they're, we're living in a different era of communications, and so one, you know, one example is there were, there are a lot of folks who have, who've said things online, and they're not used to having their you know public statements magnified. They, you know, they put out statements saying something. And it's like, well, this is something that's out there for it's the a, world to yeah, see. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we want to draw some attention to it because it has relevance to something that's going on. And so by publishing it, they they get upset, and they, you know, they and this is even elected officials who have said, "Why, well, you know, I want, I am demanding, you know, a retraction for something that I said." And it's like, well, you, you said, said it. it, you said it, and that's and that's the way it goes. So that has kind of that's the usual, usually what spurs a lot of the negative, uh, you know, reactions that I get from folks. I think for me, it, it's uh, it, does, it doesn't deter me at all. I think it's um, it's just t it's tough because you're you, there. Are some people are just not operating on the same level as you, and you have to kind of. I always have to put myself in their shoes a little bit and realize, you know, they're they're coming from a different perspective. But I, I I never take it personally because it's just it isn't personal. So I check your website daily, mm -hmm. and I know there are others that do too because I'm interested in what's going on out there, who's doing what out there, and stuff like that. Why should we care? So w someone who's never yeah. gone to your website, mm -hmm. which, go ahead, plug it for yeah, people. Yeah, it's, 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 it's San Joaquin, the San Joaquin Valley Sun is found at sjvsun.com. If I've never been there, why should I go there? You know, the, the reason to go there is uh, what you're going to learn about your community. It's not, um, you, you know, the biggest things about our current, you know, uh, environment, media environment is, you know, we've had a lot of layoffs in news. We've had TV stations reduce reporters, newspapers reduce reporters. And so we've lost a lot. You know, you no longer know what's happening at your local school mm -hmm, board. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's happening at the city council every week. Um, you don't know what's going on in government agencies you've never heard of. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. that watchdog mentality has just been replaced by people who are looking for what is going to get eyeballs. And sometimes we do the, we do the less glamorous work. <laughs> I mean, we, so one of the things that we did um, about a month and a half ago was and we finished it a month and a half ago, we started it about two months ago, was a series on um, the parks issue here in Fresno. And that's an issue that, you know, for f some people who live in the city, it came out of nowhere. It was an issue that nobody had ever heard about. And all of a sudden it was front page news. It was the issue of, of the last election cycle. And a lot of folks were confused as to why it wasn't a big issue. And so we went back and dug through hundreds of records from the city of Fresno and went to find out why why this just seemingly came out of thin air. And there was a reason. And so, you know, we, we did a whole series, th four articles about, you know, what's going on and why that happened. The work that you do, if you really want to do a good job and thorough, which sounds like you're doing, is it takes a lot of research. It's like law, right? It is. It is like law. You're, yeah. you're spending hours researching something mm -hmm. that may end up taking you a little bit less time to write. <laughs> so, what keeps you going in that? Because there could, there are times that, oh, yeah. there are times where you're like, oh man, this is page 100, <laughs> and really there's not anything relevant on page 100, but I got to keep going. Yeah. What motivates you to say, you know what, I got to keep digging here? You know, it's and what's funny is it's not so much the the things you have in front of you that you have to keep reading. That part, that's just part of doing business. It's the stuff you can't get a hold of. <laughs> I, I can count on one hand the number of stories that I can't pursue right now because I can't get people to either talk. I can't get, I can't obtain documents about it. Um, that's what frustrates me, and that's what keeps me going. Is because I will, f it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You have to find <laughs> out a way to solve, because they're so they're they're important stories, but we can't get access to them. There's just something that's stopping. Um, there's something that's that's stopping me from being able to get a hold of it. Whether it's a person who's just not willing to, you know, isn't quite there and not willing to speak, uh, or documents that I just can't find a way to get access to. How do you find? So I saw you the other day out mm -hmm. and about. How do you find your stories? Because uh, I'm like, I'm curious to know. Like for me, mm -hmm. for for guests on the show, mm -hmm. I'll be out mingling, and yeah. I'll be like, that's a like happened with me and you. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you at an event, and I'm like, you know what? 
I've never asked him about any of his publications, so here we are. Yeah. How do you find your stories? It's a combination of things. So a lot of things, you know, it's it, there's an element that you follow the pack. You know, there's there's things that are happening you can't ignore, right? <laughs> so there there is a pack mentality <laughs> yeah, to some yeah. of it. But the other, but the stuff that's really that really sets us apart really comes from our readers, and that's one of the things I love, is readers will contact me and they'll send me an email, and that sometimes they'll be angry, sometimes they'll be okay, and they'll be happy with me, but they'll say, hey, you should look at this, and they'll and they may have resources. I didn't know existed, and they can send me there. And so um, that's the readers themselves. And, and again, in order to really accurately look at your community, you have to engage it. And that's, I think, one of the things that we've failed over time is we no longer listen to the audience in, in a way that benefits, uh, you know, the readership. Is we, you know, we sort of just cast them aside. We're like, well, we don't want to read their comments. Their comments are disparaging X, Y, Z. But I think, um, you know, if you actually are willing to listen to them to an extent, you're able to get uh, a lot of benefit out of uh, out of that conversation. How do you know which stories to run with? Because I could imagine, you know, you're only limited in the time you have yeah. per day, right? Yeah. But there could be four or five fascinating stories, equally fascinating. Mm -hmm. How do you pick which one you run with? So, you know, and that's, there's a, in, in news, we, we have kind of a, there, there's sort of a, uh, vision of what we call enterprise news, which is stuff that you go out and hunt for. You, know, you make the news by, <laughs> by going out and digging for it. The stuff that happens naturally that's just you're reacting to, um, you know, that, that, that sorts itself out. You kind of figure out what is really important. And, and one of the benefits for us that is different from other online publications, you know, we send out a morning email every morning. It's called Sunrise AM. And I will say that there's no better way to sort of decipher and, and limit our resources and, and create an economy of news than that publication because that really drives, you know, we, to me, it's like I can distill down the most important things that happened in the 300 miles between Modesto and Bakersfield and that email. And, um, and so that really allows me to sort of figure out, okay, what really is the most important thing? If I'm looking at the big picture, what do people really care about that's going to get them out of, when they're getting out of bed, what are they going to read? Yeah. And so that's been the driving element for that. As far as enterprise news, there's always time for all of it. You can, you know, for four great stories that you can really dig into and pursue, you'll find the time for all four of them. It's just balancing it out. I suspect that your day in doing this stuff is not a eight to five, nine to five. I it suspect that there are times where something gets in your vein and you're doing it at 10 at night. Oh, frequently. I, I'll, the all time worst moment of, uh, since I started this was, uh, it was a Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday night Visalia Unified decided they wanted, their, their school board decided to fire their superintendent. And I just happened upon this, the, the announcement. And it was, I'd already finished our email for the next day. I was all, I was excited. <laughs> I was going to watch some television. And then I had to start making calls Change and get information. Plans. Yeah, and start calling board members and figuring out what was going on. Um, and so that was a, that was a really, um, that, that happens all the time. I mean, after this tape, taping, I'm headed home to finish up a story. Um, on some some interesting news that we were talking about before we started taping. News gets it, like, there's something about news and something about getting the news and finding the information that's in your blood. Like, you get excited. Yeah. You get passionate about the stuff. Yeah. How do we get people more engaged? One of the challenges mm -hmm. that I see are people aren't engaged. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and what I like about your kind of publications is you put stuff out there that's interesting that may have slipped through the cracks. And so, yeah. you know, you hold people accountable. Yeah. But how do we light the fire under people and say, you know, you should care about this city council issue or this school board issue? I, I think the, the, the getting people engaged part, this is, the, this is the one drawback to our current environment. Um, we are so fragmented, right? Today, you know, we count, and I don't consider them competition, but I, I consider them, you know, part of a community. You know, we have one daily newspaper. We have another online publication here in Fresno, uh, GV Wire, that is a, we could consider them a competitor to us. But in fact, we work on a lot of things co collaboratively on, uh, in some respects. You have television stations and radio stations. So you got a lot of p players. The problem is we're so fragmented mm -hmm. that uh, grabbing that attention is really difficult. And what I've learned, and we've kind of learned this through our metrics. I figured, you know, when we when I started the Sun, I figured, you know, what, we're gonna figure out what people really are interested in. It. And, and as far as we started off, news and sports, we figured those two would get people in the door. Yeah. And as much as it has, there's still an element I know I'm missing. 
And that's what ki that's what kills me is that I know that there is a population out there that we're not touching, um, that we're not talking to, that uh, really needs to get informed. And to get them, we're going to have to come up with something even more creative um, that cuts through, you know, n the noise. And that's that's really our our task moving forward. One of the things I've noticed about your publication is you actually put the number of people who read the article. Yeah. And, you know, that could be a double-edged sword because yeah. it might show that, wow, you know, you got 2,500 people reading it, mm -hmm. or it might show you got 100 people reading it. Yeah. But it doesn't sound like you care. No. <laughs> I, 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 pay, to me, page views are, again, we're, you know, we're not an advertised-based business. I mean, first of all, we're a nonprofit, so we're not here to make money. You know, we're here to report the news, and we're here to provide people with insight on their community. Um, you know, views for us, it's, it's great. I mean, it's a great way to know, you know, how things are going. Um, but for us, you know, being able, for being, people being able to see what's, go, you know, what's popular, what's not, isn't so important to us as far as it is just, you know, showing people, you know, what might interest them. But not a lot of people would. Like if yeah. it, some people might have said, you know what, if this is going to get 100 views, I'm not going to show. It's like flexing your muscle, right? Yeah. But then I noticed that you do that, and I appreciate that because – that tells me also what people are interested in. I mean, if 2,500 people are reading the one article, yeah. that means, wow, that caught people's attention. Yeah, and, and so for us, it's, it's a great, it, it really is a great metric for interest. More than anything, I, you know, I, I, again, I, I couldn't care less what the number is, so long as people are reading it. And, and, and based on my evaluation of the current market for news in, in, this, in this region, we're doing great. Our, our internal numbers, and, and that's, they match up fairly close. They're not, they're not exactly the same. You know, our, our, yeah, our website's yeah. tracker isn't as great as Google Analytics, you know, but, that, but you know, our numbers show great, great readership, and, I've, and I have no complaints. If, I had, if we weren't getting read at all, I would probably be a little more upset, but every day we have, you know, thousands of people who show up and read, and I just love that. And that's, you know, for us, the, our long-term strategy is to expand beyond just reading articles and getting into more enriched content, looking at, you know, I mean, here I am in a CMAX studio, you know, getting into video and being able to communicate mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. in another way that might be a little more accessible than the, the written Just word. the written word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any way we can partner, let me know. Absolutely. Because, you know, I think what you're doing in providing this information is, is critical because yeah. if you don't do it, who's going to do it? And you're not driven off, me, you know, marketing dollars and media. You could put a story on, out there and it's not going to hurt your sponsors. No, no. And, our, and that's the one benefit for our support, our donors and, and our benefactors. They've been you know, absolutely gracious with their latitude that they allow us. There's not a lot that we can't cover or can't touch. You know, we, you know, things that we have to, disclo you know, as far as disclosures go, we follow those ethical guidelines. Um, you know, and I think, I really thank them for their support because, and I, I ask the community to continue to support organizations like CMAC, like, you know, like The Sun, because they provide a lens for this community that doesn't exist otherwise. You, when you put your publication together, what made you say you're not going to do print? And, mm -hmm. and I mean, this might be an easy, easy, <laughs> easy answer yeah. because we see the numbers. Mm -hmm. Print is just simply disappearing. Yeah. It's not. Some people love it, but it's not the next generation. No, so talk it, about print. It's not the next generation. Number one. Number two. It's expensive. I think people don't understand. Uh, I actually really would love nothing more than have a print product. I would love to see the sun in print, and not necessarily like a newspaper. I think. The easier route is a magazine. I think magazines are a much simpler route. And I think long term, it'd be great to have a, a quarterly or a monthly, you know, review of, of what we've done and have some longer form news and journalism and, and profiles, I think, as well. But but for now, the, the biggest stopping point is cost. You know, if, if someone is out there and is watching this and decides, you know what, I really love what I'm reading in the sun and I want to <laughs> I want to support their print product, I am, would love nothing more than to see. So that. you're not against the print. I'm not product. against. It's I'm not against certain. I'm not against certain print products. I think newspapers, the newspaper business is again. I've worked in it. It's a failing model. It's not. It, it is the horse and buggy model of of journalism and of news. You are not going to be able to. You can't even run a nonprofit really with that model it's just too expensive it's certainly as a daily or even as a weekly um depending on how big your audience is and, and again we cover we're trying to cover 300 miles of of real estate that's a lot of land to to deal with so printing for that whole market is pretty prohibitive and we've seen that in the newspapers right mm -hmm. you know the shrinking oh, yeah. of the newspaper daily and then yeah. it's just changing i mean that that the new generation mm -hmm. wants to click read it and done with it. You yeah, know, they don't want to flip through it. No, they, they don't want to flip through it. Um, 
And again, they, they really like, um, they, like most of their news, and I can say this from our end, most of our traffic is via social media. It's not, even our, and I, I have to tell people, you know, for us, our loss leader is our email. Um, we don't actually, you know, and, and, I, and it's intentional. It's intentional that it's our loss leader. Similar to, I look at like Costco and their hot dogs, you know, it's like $1.99. <laughs> There's no way Costco's making money on that. But um, for us, our loss leader is our email. And the reason why is because it gets people into our format of news mm -hmm. um, in a way that nothing else will. I, a link on Facebook is not going get, to get you in, as engaged. But our email will say, oh, you know, they actually have really good information, really good content. And yes, I get a digest of what a story is, but I can go and read the whole thing and get a really good view of it. And so we've, you know, we've acquired more and more readers that way. Um, but, you know, our, our traffic, you know, our heavier traffic comes from Twitter and Facebook because that's where the, that's where the eyeballs really are. You mentioned your daily email. I don't even think I'm on that. So how can people get on it? So people can sign up at uh, sjvsun.com slash sign up. And there's actually two emails we send out. We send out Sunrise AM, which is our daily, it's our weekday morning email. It comes out at 6.30 every morning. And then we also have a sports email focused on Fresno State Athletics, starting with football this football season, which has been a little rocky <laughs> which, to you know, start. We've played a couple of awesome games oh, yeah. until the end, and we've – Gave people the run for their oh, money, absolutely. but just not getting not that victory. Not quite enough. Those those interceptions in the end zone are killer. And so yeah. we have so we have an email run by one of my colleagues, Daniel Gligich. It's called Dog Talk, and it's just a breakdown, similar format as our Sunrise email, um, but it's a weekly, uh, week to week on Fresno State athletics, um, focusing right now on football and moving into basketball when basketball season starts up. What's your goal? Are you are you looking to expand or what? Where do you see this publication in the next 10 years? In the next, hopefully still existing. That's the big <laughs> one. Um, you know, I think the, the real goal is to, is to grow. I, I think we, what we really want to add is additional reporters covering additional areas and, and really begin a, a multi-modal um, or a multimedia approach. And so, again, moving, transitioning as a balanced diet of written word and digital video. And, and I think the big thing that's, kind of we've all slept on here in the Central Valley as podcasts. We really haven't done a lot of, there aren't a lot of local podcasts that are news centric. There's a lot that are, you know, current events, um, more lifestyle or culture, but they're not news centric. They don't have to, they don't really focus on the news. Our radio stations don't produce podcasts really um, anymore. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's a, to me, I think that's where we go from here is just developing a more balanced media diet in house. So this is going to be a soft pitch. So oh, get, man. get your bat ready all because right, right. you're going to hit this out of the park. But I'm asking for a reason. Mm -hmm. Do people care about this news that you're doing? You'd be surprised. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you would be surprised how many people, how many people care. And it's it's interesting because um, I at first was with you. I and I and I live. You know, again, I'm from a I'm from the perspective. I live in a bubble, uh, like like a lot of people do. I live in a bubble of folks who uh, work in media. Or work in politics, or work in government. Um, so a lot of things that we talk yeah, that's about. That's your world. That is my world. And so when when you talk to people in that setting, I expect them to say, "Oh, you know, I saw your thing. I saw your story. It's great. Whatever." Um, I, it wasn't until I started getting. I got stopped one day, and I've been doing. I've been done radio interviews and TV interviews. So people have kind of started to know my voice and my face. Yeah. yeah. So I was at the grocery store um, in right by my home, and someone stopped me, and they said, "I read your email." And I loved this article, and I can't remember what the article was. But that, that moment, I was like, okay, there are people actually reading this, which is sh kind of shocked me a little bit because I'm, not, I'm used to the emails or the tweets or the messages on Facebook. But, but the actual that, stop. The face-to-face yeah. stop, that was where I realized, you know, the impact here is great, um, and, it, and it's, it's warranting a lot of the time and investment that I've put into it and that a lot of other people have put in with their money and, and their support. And so, um, no, I, I, the people do care because they're, they, there's a hunger for it and just not the supply for it. There's, there's a demand and not enough supply. And so, you know, we're here to fill the void. So if you were to say that your target audience, mm -hmm. how do you describe your, if a target audience exists? If it exists. How, how would you describe it? it? There really isn't one. I'll say that. There isn't a target audience. You know, I think there are other public, other media entities that have popped up that are focused more on one generation, like a demographic, whether it's racial or age or, you know, uh, even political preference. For us, we're, you know, we're much broader. You know, I, I want to see news that appeals to just about everybody. Uh, maybe not people under the age of 18 so much, but 
I mean, if, they're, if they care about their community that much at 17, 16, hats off to them. I, I yeah. just remember myself yeah, at yeah, 16 yeah. and 17, and I couldn't have cared less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so it wasn't until I got, became an adult that I really started to care about you know, my neighborhood and my community. But you know, really, people of all ages, uh, of all demographics, I think we really don't have that target audience where we're that niche. I think we really want to exp- provide a lens on our community to as many people as possible. Voting. We're running out of time. Yeah. But I want to talk about voting a little bit. Mm-hmm. When you get that ballot yeah. and some people just, oh, I'm tired of reading through it. Let me just, yeah. yes, no, yes, no. This person's name sounds good. Let me vote for them. Mm-hmm. How important is actually knowing what you vote for? Re- very. I think a lot of people would be amazed at, um, and it's not so much the people that you're voting for. I think you, you, people, you can kind of read people. You can read candidates. You can't read bonds and propositions and ballot initiatives. That's a lot harder. Um, they are deliberately written. And this is, again, some of the experience I've come from. They're deliberately written to a sort of sidestep the voter. You know, they have, they have the, the big, bold letters yeah. of what they're supposed to accomplish. And I've always, I've, I, and it's a, it's a truism that I stick to is we live in a fine print country. And you have to acknowledge that the fine print is what really matters. And the big, bold letters don't. And so... Now, the number of times that there's a, you know, you see a ballot initiative that says, you know, oh, we're going to fix roads, and then you read in there, and it's, no, we're going to, you know, we're going to pay for garbage collection or something yeah, else yeah. that has nothing to do with it. That happens more often than not, and I think a lot of people need to have the kind of wherewithal to take an hour and actually understand what they're voting on, on that level. Not so much on the candidates. The candidates, there's so much out there on any, short of school board, there, and even school board, there is so much out there on these people that you really are able to make an educate as educated decision as possible, you know, with, with that's you know out there. But I think the issues that's a lot harder. So during election time, when it comes up, are we going to see a lot of uh, your publication cover? I, I think so. I think you're going <laughs> to see a lot. Of, you're going to see a lot of insight and a lot of analysis on what's happening out on the ground and with a lot of these campaigns and issues that are going to be popping up. Alex, how can people find out more about your publication? Where can they go to sign up? Yeah. If they have any questions, who can they call? So they can they can go to sjvsun.com. That's our main website. They Easy, can, SJV they can, Sun. Yeah, SJV Sun. And so they go to sjvsun.com. They can go to sjvsun.com slash sign up to join our mail our emails, uh, Sunrise AM and Doc Talk. And if you have any tips or need any information from us, feel free to email us at news at sjvsun.com. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you so much, Zavag. That's all for this edition of the Central Valley Ledger. Thank you to our audience members listening to this broadcast on KFSR 90.7 FM and to those watching on CMAC, Comcast 93 and AT&T 99. Thank you also to our technical director making us look and sound good. Paul Starcevic is his name. He's in the studio behind the scenes doing his job making us look and sound good. Thank you to our guest, Alex Tavlian, sjvsun.com, mm-hmm. to read some of your articles. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed the program this week. Tune in next week to a new edition. KFSR and CMAC present the Central Valley Ledger every Sunday morning at 1130. For a complete program schedule, visit kfsr.org.